Let's first see how to create a data flow. Generally, when you create an SSIS package, it is for the purpose of moving data from one point to another. A source is where you specify the location of the data that you want to move or transform. Most sources point to a connection manager in SSIS. By pointing to a connection manager, you can reuse these connections throughout your package because you only need to change the connection in one place. And the data flow task is used to transfer data from source to a destination and can transform the data as needed. The transforms that exist in the data flow enable you to make changes to the data as you move it from a source to a destination. And all the transforms that you have in the SSIS are performed in the memory, which is why it is much faster than reading and writing the data to a drive. The data flow also enables you to save the data to multiple locations simultaneously. This improves performance when you're saving data. And there is a new feature of SSIS which is called the Source Assistant that helps you guide through the process of defining a connection manager and a source. Let's see how to create a data flow. Let's add a new package and let's call it data flow. Let's drag the data flow task from the SSIS toolbox and let's go to the data flow tab. Here you can use the source assistant. In this example, let's first see how to extract data from different sources. Let's double click it and it will show the different source types that you have available. And if you believe you have a source type installed on your machine but it does not appear Uncheck the Show Only Installed Source Types option and all the source types will appear. Let's uncheck this and it will show you everything that is available. Let's check it again. The Source Assistant also helps in creating a new connection if it doesn't already exist for the source type that you have selected. Let's select SQL Server as the source type and once that's selected, Let's click on New. Click on OK. And you can specify the server name and the database name here. Let's do SKU Operations. And select AdventureWorks 2014 as the database. And click on Test Connection. And click on OK. And you can ignore these errors because it's only complaining that a destination table name has not been provided. Let's close this. The most common type of source used is the OLEDB source. This can point to any compatible data source such as SQL Server, Oracle or DB2. Let's double click this OLEDB source and look at the options available. In the data access mode, you have four options defining how the data will be retrieved. Table or view, table name or view name variable, SQL command and SQL command from variable. SSIS does not easily allow a stored procedure to be accessed when using the SQL command mode. Additionally, you can pass a variable into the query by substituting a question mark for where the parameter should be and then clicking the parameters button. After these configurations have been completed, you can go to the columns page to check each column you need from the table that you wish and then renaming the output column. In this case, let's select SQL command and use the query select transaction ID, product ID, transaction date, quantity, actual cost, modified date from production.transaction history where quantity is greater than 2. And once you have the query ready, you can click on parse query to see if there are any errors. In this case, the SQL statement was successfully parsed. And then you can go into the Columns tab and change the output column name to the name that you want it to be. Let's change this to Quantity2. And sometimes incompatible data types can cause conversion issues and you may want to send these errors to a different path in the data flow. You can do this within the Error Output page that is shown here. You can go to Error Output and either you can 
fail the component on error or send it to a different place than the destination. Let's select fail component for this example and click on OK. Let's drag an union all and connect it to the OLEDB source. This union all acts as the placeholder until you learn about the destinations in the next lesson. Let's execute this package and see what happens. Press F5. And as you can see, there are some rows that meet the criteria that we have in the select query. Let's stop it. Now that we have seen how to extract data from an OLEDB source, let's see how to do the same from Excel. Let's save this package. And let's create another SSIS package. And let's rename it as Excel Data Flow. Let's drag a data flow task onto the control flow. Double click it. Let's go to other sources. Select Excel source. Double click. Click on new. And browse to the location of the file. Let's select the inventory worksheet that's on the desktop. Click on open. Click on OK. And you can select the different sheets that the Excel file has. So let's select Inventory Worksheet. Let's go to Columns. And you can change the output column name here. And direct what should happen when an error happens. SSIS supports Excel data types, but unfortunately, Excel does not translate well to how most databases are constructed. If you right-click a column in the Excel and select Format Cells, you'll find that most of the columns in your Excel spreadsheet have probably been set to General. And this general format is interpreted by SSIS as a Unicode data type. In SQL Server, the Unicode translates into NVARCAR, which is not typically what you find in databases. So, if you have a Unicode data type in SSIS and you try to insert it into a VARCAR column, it can fail. One of the lessons in this module will address the same issue. If you are connecting to a spreadsheet from Excel 2007 or later, you need to ensure that you select the proper Excel version when creating the Excel Connection Manager. Additionally, the native Excel driver is a 32-bit driver, and your packages will have to run in 32-bit mode if the workstation you developed is on 64-bit. Let's see how to enable the 32-bit mode. Let's click on OK. Right click, go to Properties, Debugging, and select the Run 64 bit runtime to false. Click on Apply and then on OK. Let's add Union All and connect it to the Excel source. And let's execute this package. Press F5. And as you can see, the rows in the inventory worksheet have been extracted from source and now are in the union all.